Welcome back to the 17th episode of Let's Play Space Engineers as a German engineer. Thank you for tuning in today. I have a couple of things planned for today. I have them on the to-do board already, so let's get right into it and check it out. There's a couple of plans for this episode here, and there's a couple more plans for future episodes. Uh, specifically for this episode, I do want to go and check out the mine. The mine has been running all throughout the last episode and for a, a while in the, in the second last episode. And so I want to just go and see, like, is everything working as we expect now, finally? Took us a while to get the configuration tuned in exactly like we needed to, but I think we we are in a good spot now, and I want to um, check that out. And then last time, we built our amazing uh, Christmas tree, rocket Christmas tree. I realized I don't have an antenna on the base, so the only way for me to control that uh, remote control, the, the, the Christmas tree, was to use my personal antenna. Um, so I think we should build an antenna for the base. Then the assemblers that we built, we built a, a few episodes ago, I built a bunch of additional assemblers. They don't have any mo modules, so we, I think we should build some modules and slap them on. The last big item for this episode that I definitely want to do this episode is making a plan for hydrogen collect collection. We have the build space capable chip down here. Moving into the next year, that's like my main goal to get like done as soon as possible. And we want to prepare for that. And one of the big things that we really, really need to do is like figure out how hydrogen works. I have not worked with hydrogen before, so I need to figure out like how to produce it, how to store it, and where to get the ice uh, to produce it. We have a couple of ice deposits uh, around our base here, but they're like kind of small, and we might need more than that. Uh, so that's why like we need to do a little bit of experimentation, try some things out. So this is definitely on the list for this episode. The other items, build mobile mining rig. I really want to tap into all the resources that we have around the base here. I don't want to go there manually and have to dig it all out. What I'm planning on doing is building a mining rig quite similar to the radial mining rig that we have here at our base, but make build in a way that you can move it around, that you can move it from deposit to deposit. I'm not 100% sure yet um, how I will get the ores away from it, if it will just have storage on board and we'll drive it back to the base and unload it at the base, or some kind of like very long pipeline running from our base to wherever the mining rig is deployed, or if there's going to be some kind of like heavy hauler. I think the current hauler is probably not going to be sufficient. The other thing is like I've been looking at our storage dashboard here. I have no clue how close we are to running out of storage. So I want to add a, a storage percentage kind of thing to this dashboard. And we still want to paint the hauler and the miner at some point. Right now, this is not really a priority. I think we have a bunch of stuff that is that will actually move us forward in the progress within the game. Those are, to me at least right now, higher priority than making our first generation rover and, and, and ship kind of like look a little bit better. In terms of building the space capable ship, I have a couple thoughts as well. I want to build a rocket. Probably not the most common thing in Space Engineers. Most people build these kind of like sci-fi ships, but I find the idea of building a rocket enticing for whatever reason. I also want to build, I want I want to have a rocket silo, basically, um, that I will build the rocket inside of, and then from where the rocket can launch, and then also com come back and, and dock again. Um, so I also want to build a rocket silo. The mobile mining rig might actually be a, an important component to that, because that will allow us to actually relatively easily dig a big uh, radial circular area wherever we want to build the, the rocket silo. Of course, one possibility is that we just build it into this dugout once this has completed. Let's get into the actual plan for this episode. Inspect the mine. So, as you can see, this has been working well. Uh, it's been digging continuously and nicely down here. Uh, and it's not been getting stuck anymore. Uh, so the current settings that I have them at is this rotor rotates three times per hour. So, it has a... RPM of, I think, 0 0.05. That's like one rotation per 20 minutes and three rotations per hour. And then each of these nine pistons moves at 0 0.0001 meters per second, which means it lowers the drill head by one meter per rotation. And that's been working well. These ridges here, if they're not fully ground away, they would create problems with leaving like little... Um, bits of, of voxel behind that is not actually happening because you can imagine there to be like a sphere around each of these drill heads that is removing the voxels and you can you can actually see 
it just going here and then going down here and then coming up and going all the way around here. Each of these mining heads has a sphere like this. And right here, these two spheres, they overlap. Two spheres intersecting create a circle, right? So there's a circle here somewhere that is the sphere of this mining head and the sphere of this mining head overlapping. That circle has a diameter. If you lower these mining drill heads at a pace that is larger than that diameter of that circle uh, per revolution, then what will happen is that these drill heads will miss part of these ridges because the ridge will be too high. Like if you imagine the circle here, uh, the sphere here and the sphere here, there's an area up here where the sphere comes down here and the sphere comes down here. It's like a, almost like a V. If any material is above that V, like not, not inside any either of those spheres anymore, then we'll miss it. And that happens if if you drop the mining tra trail heads faster than the diameter of the circle, because that's the lowest point and the highest point on that circle is where still where where everything will get mined away. And so if you let's say that circle circle has a diameter of one meter. If you drop it more than one meter, then whatever was below the lowest point, when it comes back to the same spot, may be above the highest point at that point. Right? And that that that'll create a problem that will mean some material will be left behind. So this is working, and I'm happy with this. We talked about the mine. Let's get to building an antenna. So I think I want to put an antenna on the top of my garage here somewhere. So this is a regular antenna here, but there's also this antenna dish, which I find really cool. We might need a, a hinge or something. So yeah, I want to. I think I want to use the antenna dish, um, put it up here somewhere. Uh, I will need to replace one of these blocks here with a with a full size block so I can actually put the antenna down. I want to raise this up a little bit and then put a hinge and, and or maybe a rotor on top. Maybe we don't, actually don't need to raise it higher because putting a hinge and a rotor will already raise it up quite a bit. Maybe one more block. Okay, um, I decided to quickly weld it up as well. Uh, it wasn't that much stuff anyway. I'm not sure I love this block here, the square block. Maybe should have used like a circular block here and like a round block here instead or something. But uh, yeah, I, I like it. I also decided to move it um, from there over here. Um, I was a little bit concerned about this being in the way of me wanting to land and and uh, and whatnot. Um, cool. So, we've built an antenna. That's useful. Add modules to assemblers. So we have, I believe, three assemblers right here. One, two, three. And, um, there's space for three modules over here. There's not any space for a module here because I covered this. In theory, I could run this around this. In fact, in theory, I should... I should be able to just run it off of here, or off of there. Whatever, I should be able to put another module up there, but we have three here, and then we have three on the other side, and then we can put one beneath. We'll, we'll skip the one on top for now, so seven modules. We can build speed modules, speed modules, yield modules, or power efficiency modules. Well, I don't think we can actually use yield modules on the assemblers. We can only do speed module or power, mo power efficiency. I don't really care for power efficiency, so let's do speed modules. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, what keeps happening here is that my assemblers get filled up 
with iron and then cannot cannot produce material anymore because they can't pull in like the cobalt or nickel or silicon or whatever else they need to produce very annoying i wonder if there's a way to uh, fix this obviously inventory management scripts could fix this but i wonder if there's a way to fix this with blocks i could fix it by moving the refinery to be closer to the large storage container right like my guess is that the problem is that the refinery produces something and pushes it out into the next place where it can store it which are these assemblers right over here right next to it so i could probably fix that by moving the the refinery somewhere that it's closer to the storage container down here right the large storage container so that if i wanted to if, if to get iron to these to these assemblers they would have to pull it through the storage container that way they should never end up getting the inventory clogged up like this i'll deal with it for now and I'll figure out how to solve this at a later point. Okay, all the speed modules are built. Make plan for hydrogen connection. Hydrogen. Let's figure out how to use it. Hydrogen engine, industrial hydrogen tank, hydrogen tank, small hydrogen tank. Okay, so the small hydrogen tank and the hydrogen tank both exist as small blocks as well. I'm not quite sure if I ever want to build the rocket as a large grid or small grid. I might build it as a large grid, but I'm not sure yet. So we have an O2H2 generator. Frankly, I don't know how much how much this actually produces. I think I'd build a hydrogen tank somewhere. We'll just stick one on top of here and then see how quickly the, it fills it up. We right now have 12,400 ice. And let's see how much ice it uses when it fills it up. Okay, so the hydrogen tank is built. My guess is that the O2 generator is now producing hydrogen and storing it in there. Let's uh, check it out. There you go, yeah, it's filling up. So it can fit. Oh, this is jiggling around a lot, so I don't know if I can read this. It's maybe a million liters. So it's 2%. Let's see how much ice we have already used. A thousand ice. So like roughly every percent is a thousand ice. So let's fill it to 5%. Let's fill it to 5% and then we'll stop it. And we'll take inventory quickly. So the 5% now. So we used two and a half thousand ice. So that's actually, so two and a half thousand ice makes 50,000 liters. Yeah, it's 20x. So to, to fill this entire small tank would um, require 50,000 50, ice. Okay, so we will need a lot of ice. Let's quickly check out our GPS cards here. We have some ice here and some ice there. I'm pretty sure that the, these amounts will not be sufficient it would make sense probably to find like an ice lake somewhere but before we do that let's let's see how much uh hi how much hydrogen we are actually using with those thrusters so how big are these these are quite large okay and then let's see here small ones just curious I've built a hydrogen engine on top of here. This is like a large grid normal one. And right now it's not burning any fuel. But if we go and do full thrust override. Why is the hydrogen not going down? Oh, turn it off again. Let's go to the O2H2 generator because we probably burned through some ice right now. And we turn this block off. And then we need to turn the small hydrogen tank on but it shouldn't be filling because the o2 generator is off it's going down slowly that's because there's no some thrust left okay so if we turn that to full power it just goes down really quickly oh here it says eight 
hectoliter. What is that? Let me look that up. So hectoliters is 100 liters. So this is 800 liters per mm, second? Yeah, that would make sense. That's roughly... Let's see here. Yeah, that's roughly the rate at which this goes down. Okay, so if we want to have... Let's say a minute of thrust, right? That puts us at... Um, 8,000 times 6 is 48,000. So 50,000, like 5% is a minute of thrust for one of these thrusters. If we want to run the hydrogen ship, we need a lot of hydrogen is, I think, the the brief answer. And how much uh, hydrogen are we producing in one of these generators? Let's see here. If we turn that on again. I would say that's roughly the same amount that the engine is consuming. Maybe a little bit slower. I'll leave them there for now. I won't grind them up in case we want to do some more experiments. But I think what that means, ultimately, is we will need to find an ice lake. Let's um, take our miner for a little spin and see if we can find an ice lake somewhere. <laughs>
please leave them in the comments below or jump into discord uh, and share them there with me um you can find the link to the discord in the description underneath this video thanks a lot for watching if you enjoyed this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up it really helps with the youtube algorithm and if you have friends that you think might enjoy this video as well please share it with them this is the best way to help the channel grow again thanks a lot for watching i wish you guys a happy new year and see you in 2023 until then bye